Well, hey, 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 this is Rosa, our CG Creations. How are you doing? Oh, let me turn this around. I'm bringing to you today a, a seafood bake in a crock pot. Got my crock pot. Got my little crock pot liner. So, less than the cleanup mess for me. What you're going to do is you're going to take any seafood item you like. Totally up to you, whatever you want. I ended up just, because this is my very first time making it, Carl, hubby and I love seafood. But you just never know, especially when it's a brand new recipe that you've never tried. But I was just uh, go surfing the internet, just looking at different things. I wanted to change my pace and change her variety a little bit. So I got some frozen shrimp. I only got one small batch because if we don't care for it, we didn't waste a whole lot of money because seafood is expensive. And then I got some imitation shrimp flakes. Uh, I couldn't find, the, well actually they did have crab. And they also had some fresh crab, but I don't want to spend my money on that until I know if I even care for this one first. So, what we're going to do is, I'm just going to cut this. And I did take these out last night, and I want to make sure if this particular one, I ended up getting this one just because it was cheaper. So, I need to take the tail, this, this hard part off the tail, okay? Take the tail part off. And see how it just comes right off. Okay. Oop. Now I made a big mess already. <laughs> okay. It's still well this was out, yes. I took this out last night and it's here it is the next morning. And throw away this part. I'm cutting this part off because I don't need that part. Since we're in Houston, we're native to the coast. So we get a lot of fresh seafood, which we're lucky in that aspect of it. Not all parts of the U.S. do that or other parts of the, country, the world. But if you're able to get fresh, try to do fresh if you can. But let's first find out and see if how much we like it. Just because somebody else made it doesn't mean you like it. Even if you like the same ingredients. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to care for it. So I'm just taking off the very last little tip of the nail. The tail my fingers are getting cold <laughs> so let me continue that and because my hands are dirty I have a little towel right there because I knew it was going to get dirty And if you, um, let me show you for those who are new at this. Oh, that one didn't even have a tail. Okay, let me show you. Here is a little shrimp. Here's a little tail that's got the claw that's got, it's hard. You don't want to eat that. If you pinch this right here between your fingernail and the end of the nail, pull it, twist it, it slides right off. And then this slides right off. This is hard skin. You don't want to eat that. So let's do that again one more time. Pinching it. Twisting. And I'm pulling it off. And that is good meat right there. I love shrimp, but I've gotten allergic to it. Something happened about 15, 18 years ago, and I can't eat shrimp. Now, I can eat stuff around it. I can eat any shrimp in anything, but I can't actually bite into the shrimp itself. So I get a food allergy, and you know, they have to rush me to the hospital. And right now, I don't have an EpiPen, so we're good to go. So now I'm just taking off that hard skin that's part of the tail which is part of the claw I'm not really for sure if it's the claw or how they classify that if I remember I'll go ahead and uh, look it up and I'll do a little pop-up of what this part of the shrimp is okay Let's see. 
How many more I have left? Oh, my fingers are frozen. <laughs> but I'm glad I got my little apron on because I don't want to. I'm on my way to go to work. I got up early to get this stuff done so it could be ready for tonight when we get home. Okay, I think I forgot everything. Let me just double check. Oh, there was one more left. As pricey as these things are, you definitely want to make sure you don't miss anything. You want to use every bit of it. Okay, let me just double check. I'll protect everything. I'm going to put my extra claws that I had on the plate right in here. And then let me get... Cut this one. Let me get my hands dried a little bit and get a little warm up. Because they're numb from being so cold. And... Make sure you got good, clean, sanitized scissors. These are used for nowhere but the kitchen. So I don't make sure, hubby, and I already told hubby, don't use it for anything but stuff for food for the kitchen or like cutting pizza. I like to cut my pizza because I like little squares of my pizza. Uh, I think they call it New York. I believe that's called New York. If anybody knows, let me know. I know there's a name for it. Okay, and this comes in little pieces like that, because this is pieces of crab. This is imitation crab. It's not the real crab. And then, let me get my stuff back over here. You want to cut it in bite-sized pieces. All over. I've got just a few more minutes and I gotta get going. So we're gonna continue doing that, cutting it up, bite-sized pieces. This has definitely got more is, now, is this the one, the crab, or is this the lobster one? Let me see what is this one called. This one is the... Okay, so this is made with fish protein, including Alaska Pollock. Now, if I had extra cash flow to spend on something like this, I would definitely be buying regular, full, regular fresh crab meat and I would be using fresh shrimp I'm trying to keep an eye on my time frame because I really gotta hurry up I don't want to be late for work I'm just going to continue doing this, and I'll bring you back when we come to that next phase, okay? We'll bring you back, because there's another part to this. Okay, we're back to the next phase. So we've got our shrimp and our imitation lobster. <laughs> supposed to be imitation lobster, but it's not. Now, I keep a container like this of spaghetti that I cut in half or thirds because I like sometimes I just prefer that and then I have another tall container that's full of long pasta because hubby likes certain dishes with the really long noodles so this just saves me some time and then you want to pour about a pound of pasta into your dish about a pound. I got this little measure that measures, uh, it tells you it's on one side, one serving, two, three, or four, so that tells you for one person, two, three, or four people. And I keep this in here just because I got that 
who knows where I got it because I've had it for many, 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 many years. Okay, let me go double check my recipe to make sure that I'm not missing any other steps. Okay. Oh yeah, I want to add some. I don't need to add. I write all mine. I print them out. Then I put them in a sheet protector. Okay, so I want to add some garlic paste, some red onions, and it's. I think it was paprika. Is what I need to add into this thing here, and Parmesan cheese. Okay. So let's get that paprika. So we're going to do some parsley flakes. Okay, where's my parsley? Fine, fine. Where's parsley? Okay. And I'm not going to do, because I'm going to work, I'm going to wait and I'm going to do my cheese at the very end. Okay, so let me get my, I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to sprinkle. This is just two different, three different jars, because you know, I know, I know like a lot of us, we have jars here and there and here and there, you think you're out and actually you find out, oh yeah, I do have some. So I'm just going to sprinkle in just a little bit, not a whole lot. It's probably like one fourth tablespoon, teaspoon. And then I'm, I've got a jar for crushed up parsley, and then I've got a jar of freshly dehydrated whole parsley. Because you never know when you want the bigger pieces or if you want smaller pieces. So about that same thing, about a one-fourth of a teaspoon of that. Mm, this smells so good. This is dehydrated almost seven months ago. Then we're going to pour our Alfredo sauce. You're going to use a 16-ounce jar of Alfredo sauce. I make my own Alfredo sauce, as you can see from the pan. Then we're going to stir this up. And you want everything to get in there and incorporated, and the sauce is going to soften the pasta noodles. You want to mix this all up. Get all the way down to the bottom. And if you break a couple of noodles, not a big deal. But you definitely want the noodles to be on the bottom so they soak up all that goodiness. Because you're going to cook this on high for two hours in your crock pot. And then it'll be totally ready. So now I'm just going to mix, and then you're going to add a layer of cheese, any cheese you want, Parmesan cheese cheddar cheese, whatever cheese you want. Sprinkle that on top. Add a little salt and pepper if you want to or skip it. I'm skipping it because I prefer to cook without salt and pepper. I just prefer to add the salt and pepper added at my plate because hubby likes a lot of pepper and a little bit of salt. I like a little bit more salt and just a little bit of pepper. So that works out for the both of us. But you do you because you know what? This is your kitchen. You get to do exactly what you want. Okay, so we're pretty much done now, and I'll bring you back when we get to the next phase. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bring you back when we get ready to do the taste test, because this is really all there is to it. There's nothing else. Now, if you buy the store-bought um, Alfredo sauce, after you pour the jar of sauce in there, add, um, fill it up with water, shake it, and get all the uh, goodiness in there, and pour that in there. And that water mixture is going in to soak up the pasta noodles and make them all nice and soft for you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this all down, get my lid in, put it in the fridge. Oop, good thing I wore my apron. I almost splattered myself because, I got, like I said, this is going to be tonight's dinner. So hubby gets home three hours before I do. I'll ask him to turn this, take this out of the fridge, let it sit for 30 minutes. On the counter, let it warm, cool, warm, uh, not be so cold. And then put it in the uh, crock pot on the crock pot cooker and put the lid on it. Well, this is gonna have the lid on it the whole time while I'm gone and while it's sitting in the fridge. Okay, I'm just wanting to make sure, and I'm gonna bring you closer up so you can see. 
I just want to make sure that all this pasta is totally under the sauce. I don't want any hard pasta nowhere. And of course, as it cooks, it's going to loosen up anyway because it's going to get um, it's going to get um, moist, so the pasta is going to sink in. I just want to get as much as I can to make it smooth, just because I can. <laughs> okay, so now we're done with this. Let me bring you up, so just so you can see. You see how I covered everything totally? Yep, there's a little piece of pasta noodle there. That's okay, I'm good to go with that. So now I'm going to put my lid on it, put this in the fridge, hubby will come out. Take it out, put it on the counter for 30 minutes, and then in 30 minutes, put it on the crock pot, my little crock pot stand right there. See that right there? Put the lid, make sure the lid still stays on there, and then he'll put it on high. And then two hours, we're ready for, to eat supper. Okay, we'll bring you back. Okay, we are back. Here is the crock pot with the lid on it. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. Look at that. I wish we had smell vision Looks so good. Let me go ahead and turn off the crock pot. Let me scoop it out. I'm going to use a bowl. There's our pasta, the sauce. Now, I won't be able to eat the shrimp because I'm allergic to it, but I'll give it to hubby. He'll he'll eat it. I'm allergic to eating the shrimp, but I'm okay if it's cooked or something else altogether. That doesn't make me uh, go to the emergency room. I'm just stirring this up a little bit. I already stirred it once already. not sharing with anybody it's just gonna be me and hubby eating this let me get my one of those because that was a crab lobster imitation I don't think I have a piece of shrimp in here I don't think I did oh yes I do have one let me get it out before I do the taste test see there we go shrimp okay, hubby can have that one okay so oh there's another one Okay, so let's do the taste test. Mmm. The pasta could be cooked a little bit longer, but then there could have been something that was on the top layer, not only the bottom. Let me do a taste again. Just see if the pasta. Mm. That piece of pasta was cooked good. The first one was not so good. When I guess it's like anything else, I mean it's cooked, but I could have used it a little bit more cooked. But I think this is a two thumbs up. And the next time, I will definitely be adding like a little small pieces of corn to make it more um, like the whole corner corn, the fresh garden corn. You can always dump a can of can of corn drained or a frozen corn in there too but to give it more of a seafood taste but it is a seafood pasta thank you so much for watching we'll catch you in the next video don't forget to hit like comment and share take care now bye bye